Uh, this is from Guy Lockheed. I know a place you could work. I am enjoying the podcast so much. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate that. Thank you for, for it and all, you, all, all your other inspira- inspiring work. Um, I wanted to ask your opinion about what makes a great place for training. It's something we discussed at breakfast. I am fascinated by the gym environment and how different spaces make us feel in and about our bodies. Boy, you nailed it right there, didn't you? I would love to hear your thoughts about some of the most special places you've trained in and whether there are any common features, yes, tangible and intangible between them. Many thanks, Guy. Well, I got to tell you, Guy or, or Guy, uh, that's, a, that's, a solid, that's a solid question because you're right. There are tangible things and there are the intangibles. Um, I currently have my own gym here at the home. I have a full membership at Epic and I also have another membership at one of those 24 seven places that has been comped me and I literally never use because I feel that it's such an unwelcoming place. I mean, I feel for people who don't know what they're doing there. God, I'm, I mean, I've been in the weight room since 1965. I know how to do everything. And I just find the place a zoo atmosphere. At my home gym, we f- we strive for something called intentional community. So I expect you to know everybody's names. I expect you to say hi. I really expect you to go out to breakfast with us after. If you're working on something or something happened to you, you got injured, you're, you're, in one case your dad died. And, well, in my case, my brother died, you know. Um, I expect the community to, to rally up. Um, fundraise if we have to, be friends if we have to. So I'd hate to call that intangible because to me, intentional community is something I can, well, I say I can put my hand on it, but it'll literally in a way, huh? Pat on the back, uh, arm around, a uh, place to cry if you need to. Uh, when the, I always tell the story, and in fact, it was his birthday just two days ago. Dick Knottmeyer turned 88, and he and his wife celebrated their 70th wedding anniversary. You know, as much as Dick did for me in the area of the snatch, clean and jerk, front squat, mass building, and all that stuff, um, you know, one of my favorite stories is, you know, I got my dog, Paint the Wonder Dog, when I was in first grade. When I came home from Utah State, uh, it was real obvious. I was a junior in college. It was time for him to be put to sleep. He was, he was done. And so I did it. And when I went to the gym, <laughs> here, look at this. <laughs> you know, I was pretty, I was, I was upset, visibly upset. And Dick goes, what's wrong? And I go, you know, I had to put paint to sleep. And what he did was he sat down on the bench and he just started talking about his dog, Reg, and what how hard it was for Reg, for him when Reg had to be put to sleep. So my training partner, Eric, shows up a few minutes later and looks in and goes, what the hell happened here? And Dick goes, and he goes, he could barely say it was like paint. And Eric flops on another bench. And the three of us just sat there for probably 45 minutes talking about our dogs. That's one of the most important training sessions in my life. You notice I didn't mention snatch, clean and jerk, or front squat. But to me, that's why I call Dick Notmeyer once a month. And Dick gives me advice that I should sleep well and eat my protein and drink water and don't be stupid, and you know, because we are a community in that gym. Where I'm at at Epic, you know, I'll go in, like yesterday when I walked in, it wasn't, the, the gym trainers all said hi to me. Hi, Dan, hi. But Vicky, who trains about the same time as me every day, she said, hi, Dan, and asked how my weekend was. And we talked for a few minutes. And then, you know, Frankie was over there, and we talked for a few minutes. And this, if, So that's what I'm looking for in, in a gym. I'm looking for a place that isn't just supporting me with my furious, terrifying trapezius and my blistered biceps and my tyrannical triceps, I'm running out of words, my pulverizing pectorals and my cannonball deltoids. I want a place that, you know, I want to come back in, even if it's a bad day. I want to come back in and hang out and you know, uh, breathe the good air with the the people around me. So I've noticed that if a very simple one to pick on uh, as we go through this guy is a very simple one is noise. If you come in and it's just 
ridiculously loud in a gym, that to me is almost universally a turnoff. Um, because, yeah, maybe you can hear hardcore or whatever. That's great. It is hard to be hardcore a long time. Um, you, you watch, you go to hardcore gyms. A uh, friend of mine o o opened one a couple of years back. He told me the biggest dis business mess of his life. Um, just constantly breaking things, all kinds of issues, all kinds of fights. Not a place he wanted to be in. I like a place that's has a business-like atmosphere in the workouts. Uh, people are training. I like to see people on the floor. I like to see people moving things like prowlers or sleds or uh, battling ropes or whatever. I don't care what it is. I like to see things moving. I don't like to see a ton of machines. That's my. That's what I'm looking for. Um, you'll notice if you ever come to my home gym, that's what it looks like. Uh, Epic Fitness there in 33rd, that's what it looks like. So yeah, it, it is interesting because you said tangible and intangible and almost I did give you some ideas about equipment. Less equipment, to, uh, less machines tends to be better. But I mean, I'm sure I'll come up with a graph for this next time. I'll have this, you know, sweeping graph for you. But less machines, uh, more medicine balls. Less machines, more kettlebells. Less machines, more people getting up and down off the floor. Um, I like I like seeing people doing hip thrusts, and I like to see people doing goblet squats and farmer walks. But the intangible tangibles are things like intentional community, people who care for you, people who you know your name. Um, I don't I don't necessarily – we used to talk about the, the worst model of a church is a room full of mirrors. Um, we have a, friends of mine down – go to a Catholic church down this way. And uh, I mean literally every single person in the congregation uh, is white. They all look alike, dress alike. They cheer for the same team. It is the worst model of church I can imagine. Of course, I live in Utah, so that's a lot of that's going to happen no matter where you go. But, you know, to me, the best model of church is that when I see people of various hues and shades and income levels and outcome levels and family dynamics, to me, that's what a church is. To me, a good gym, uh, I look around and if everybody looks like me, I don't want to be at that gym. I want to see a, I want to see people who challenge me uh, and people I can help. But that's that's my worldview. Um, you know, I don't I don't like rooms full of mirrors. I like I like I like diversity in the people the people I train with. I I don't know if I would learn a lot from a fellow 62 year old Highland gamer and discus throw. I don't know if I'd learn a lot from another Danny John, but I learn a lot from my trainer who's 22 and my training partner who's a nurse and she's 56. You know, I learn a lot from those guys. Uh, they're amazed at the loads I can put up over my head. And I'm amazed at the, their life story and the fact that they're still showing up. That's what I'm looking for in a gym. Good question.